computer, everyone can hear me okay? Yeah. Um, by way of introduction, I ask the question, what is sustainable housing? But I suspect you all know this, that considerations span across a myriad of inclusive multivalent issues and disciplines, from uh, location of public transport to higher densities, etc., etc. I'm not going to read through it because I need to cut, uh, cut this paper a little bit. But and I think some of these have been touched on yesterday. Uh, the ones I'm going to talk about are flexibility, building form, uh, construction systems, and energy usage. Um, and various writers refer to these multivalent issues. I've put some of them in my paper. Various governmental papers also refer to them. For example, the EU ministerial meetings every year issue something on sustainable living. And the Bristol Accord, for example, is, I'll just read some of the words they use in their statements. Sufficient range, diversity, appropriate size, scale, density, design and layout, mixed use, durable, flexible and adaptable building, use materials which minimize negative environmental impacts. Uh, an Irish government uh, publication notes that sustainability involves construction of homes that are structurally sound, energy efficient, environmentally friendly, adaptable over time to changing household needs, and that housing provision must be integrated with necessary transport and other physical infrastructure, social infrastructure, and community. So, given these broad parameters, then, uh, what can teachers and students achieve in a 12 week uh, sustainable housing project? I will address this question by reflecting on four issues of the student project in the fourth year after the studio at DIT from January to May this year. The student's challenge uh, that, we, that the staff set was to design in part detail a new urban community housing scheme that would be sustainable economically, socially, and environmentally. The student's design would respond to a varied demographic profile, hence, have a range of apartment technologies, universal design principles were mandatory while their response to the sustainability brief was to include strategies to minimize environmental impacts by selective material specification. Each design had to demonstrate how embedded that carbon and energy were minimized in construction and during the lifetime of the project. All projects were to be designed with timber structure with the ideal of achieving a carbon neutral proposal. Students were expected to demonstrate an ability to respond to the dual themes of environment and tectonics from concept through to constructive detail. The four sites chosen, all close to the historic Georgian quarter on the north side, that's the river Liffey there. So this is the centre of Dublin, there's a concrete. Uh, I'll just see here. Yeah, two of the big the Georgian squares in Dublin. Uh, had some shared characteristics but also unique challenges, particularly these two sites here, which I'll talk about in a minute. The teaching methodology was relatively conventional, and included lectures by staff and visiting experts in all the default topics, one-to-one -one studio tutorials, and group reviews with visiting critics. Visits were organized at local residential and community centers where students could engage with community activists, facilitators, and residents. And this person here is not one of our, our colleagues, but he's actually a community activist who came in to the reviews we had. This is one of the projects we visited, where we were social housing project, we were shown around by a, uh, the, the manager and the, the students were engaged with her and with some of the residents. The class of 55 students was quite a large class, we divided into three tutorial groups with two or three staff responsible for each group. I will examine the students' responses four key topics of sustainable housing that we covered on the project. The first one is self-explanatory site form and orientation, and I put that in the zone of economic, social, and environmental sustainability. <coughs> Siting orientation and building form are crucial to sustainability and in particular energy uses. In the Irish time, we strive to use the form and section of buildings to get good sunlight into private and communal spaces while striving also to increased density. Students were given many examples of this, both from Ireland and uh, from Spain, I believe this is Ben said from London, by and myself and other colleagues in various lectures. 
The densities and contacts generally required between three to six storey perimeter blocks. Thus, the south facing street edges on two of the sides presented uh, difficult, sorry, presented difficulties as students strove to accommodate this need with the desire that their schemes have a strong urban presence. Students also juggled the balance between these concerns. So, for example, the two sites that I mentioned had difficulties where these, this is one of them, where the street that face practically south or southwest, and uh, the normal reaction from an urban point of view is to uh, have some kind of urban presence if the, the students have to also get light into the site. So that was the struggle. Uh, students also juggled the balance between these concerns and developing appropriate urban and architectural forms. Um, schemes vary between a subtle response to the contextual urban grid and using your proposal as a strong urban marker, as we see here in particular with this tower project. So flexibility and adaptability, social and economic sustainability. Um, Though having varied interpretations, these two terms are an essential aspect of sustainable housing. Broadly interpreted, they require that new housing should be able to be adapted to suit changing needs, to prolong its life in order to avoid obsolescence. Schneider is able to categorize flexibility into car, which determines how design can be used, but provides options for uses of spaces such as sliding walls and both end beds, and soft, which refers to tactics which allow a certain indeterminacy. Quoting historian Adrian Forty, they note that hard flexibility provides the means of allowing architects the illusion of, I'm quoting now, projection, projecting their control over the building into the future, while soft flexibility relinquishes that illusion and allows architects to change the design according to their needs. A case study seminar illustrated hard and flex and soft flexible strategies to the student group. An example an example of the hard type may be rock street housing uh, by Sean Hankin Architects in Dublin, which I worked on myself, that allows options for the use of the third bedroom. In theory, all the non structure walls can also be removed within the apartment, pending fire regulation compliance and service positions, allowing the occupier to completely redesign the interior. The scheme by architects Gulliks and Warmel of Kyrobon in Finland where through clever positioning of structure and services, a basic shell and core, as you see here, uh, affords multiple options for apartment sizes and types. While off, um, so, so these uh, are the options around here, but um, still ended up looking at them. And then there was one other option, which uh, I'm going to talk about. So while offering more than most architectural schemes, the multiple results are still limited by the architects, and that's a very important point. So if we move on to talk about soft flexibility, the soft flexible scheme of quint to moderate housing, uh, I, I'm calling it soft, by art, uh, in Chile by architects elemental, offers users the ability to adapt the space to their needs over time. An idea that led to intense debate among the students about the role of the architect particularly when example of tenant interventions were shown, which you see here on the right. The student's own schemes generally opted for the hard interpretation of flexibility, often allowing for manipulation of rooms around the central core or removal of floors to create double height living spaces. You see in these two examples here, this power example is the core in the middle, and that student gave options for the, uh, how the apartments could work on different floors. A challenging proposal of soft flexibility combined with user participation and community engagement came from student Sophie Kelleher, whose project entitled The Stacks envisages the urban site full of drying timber stacks that can be developed into homes over time. In her own words, there is a creation of purpose, pride, and community on the ground floor through a timber workshop where unemployed people learn life skills and trades, which in turn will be used to build their own homes. The edge is no longer protecting and barricading its inhabitants, but is activated by the building program as the drying timber is built up into apartments, a tower of timber slowly inhabited. A noble aspiration evocatively represented and, while somewhat undeveloped, 
in planning detail. It challenges the conventional mode of housing production and suggests another way of inclusively and collaboratively providing housing as well as an alternative approach to architectural practice and indeed architectural education. Along the lines of some of the methods espoused in the Spatial Agency Project by uh, Alwan Schneider and Till. The next uh, area I'd like to look at is energy, energy construction materials. Um, the use of a timber structure was a <coughs> determined requirement of the project. Wood is a carbon sink, it removes carbon from the atmosphere and stores it for life, and the process to produce timber uses much less energy than, for example, steel or concrete. Uh, see an example here from a study by Skidmore on the Maryland uh, of timber tower in New York. The regeneration of new forests continues the cycle of carbon sequestration. Uh, Prefabricated timber buildings can be erected quickly, thus reducing site waste, heat, and costs. This knowledge informed our insistence on a timber structure for the student's project, despite some protestations from them. Uh, one case study highlighted to students, Murray Grove, was a recently completed nine story tall timber residential building in London. The structure was erected in 27 days with four people. Jordan Miller, director of Sustain Worldwide, notes that the sequestered carbon in this building is equivalent to 29 years of operational energy in the building. And with 10% renewable energy, it would take 140 years to save the same amount of carbon. And that's allowing for the transporting energy costs of the manufactured timber panels from Austria. Students focused their research on the structural, environmental, and aesthetic implications of the timber options available. Given the scale of the project, almost all students chose either an engineered cross laminate system, like you see here, uh, in spruce, larch, and pine, or a breadth scuffle system similar to COT, uh, except that hardwood down for you, thus reducing the harmful effect of food, or a post and beam. Structure of new land posts and being infilled with structural insulated panels known as SIPs. Finishes were varied, uh, including timber tiling, tiles, and render. Students were also introduced to the Casanova software and were required to utilize this to calculate the energy demand of their buildings and then re reduce this through design or at least gain an understanding of the energy implications of their designs. Several multidisciplinary uh, workshops in both structure and detailing occurred between the architecture students and the third year engineering students and third year architectural technology students to facilitate the students' learning. The final task of this aspect and the data whole project was for each student to carry out a detailed investigation at a scale of 1 to 20 and a full scale model of crucial junction. The intention being to demonstrate an ability to carry design ideas through energy analysis. The last area I want to talk about is threshold matters, and I can say this is social sustainability. This issue was introduced to the students as an Orkinet workspace developed by colleagues Thomas Holmes and the Senate Bochelet, with input from Adam Yakimovich and myself. Uh, developed tasks were assigned to different groups of students in different institutes, and they were asked to offer the results to the Microdomus web portal and comment on their fellow students' work. Dutch architect Herman Herzberger has noted that the threshold provides the key to the transition and connection between two areas with divergent territorial claims, and as a place in its own right that constitutes essentially a spatial condition for the meeting and dialogue between areas of different orders. So, ambiguous yet affording opportunities, threshold thus affords options for socializing and immediately, place to meet neighbors, survey shared territory, and watch children at play while also serving as a transitional space between the very public realm of the street and the very private nature uh, of the book. Sorry, very private world of the book. The DIT students were asked to consider the nature of threshold in housing, those multiple zones between the public and private realm that have many layers, meaning and often varying treatments across different cultures and climates. In particular, students were asked to consider threshold detailed treatment of an entrance from the street, a courtyard, an access gallery, a staircase, or a hallway, or a part or of any of these, and other more private spaces, and to develop one or more drawings showing this treatment. So that was the task that I set. Some students used devices of public or semi-public activity, or even expressive portals, uh, 
to ease the transition from the public to the private realm, thus creating many layers of threshold along the way. Others reflected, reflected strong, and I must say, first of all, these are not student projects. Others reflected strongly on the issue of gallery access to apartments, often perceived as a difficult and contested space in the Irish context. In my own previous experience, for example, in practice, dealt with city council officials and many residents regarding gallery access and social housing projects as hugely problematic. However, on a visit to Dominic Street, uh, flats seen here, one block being demolished, um, students were inspired by the desire of residents to maintain gallery access as a necessary social function, a clear example of the social power of threshold. Many students explored this problematic in their schemes, how to achieve this useful social function, yet offer privacy in the apartments. One student pulled the galleries away at two points, <coughs> making for an interesting sculptural array of flying timber galleries within the courtyard. You see here, here's, here's the image, and the actual drawing some details. Um, another, while another student used a section of very surface treatment to define thresholds from gallery access to apartments. As an alternative to delineating threshold zones, this student drawn in Keynes extensive but very timber cladding treatment to the walls and soffits of the access gallery, gives a feeling of containment yet breakout within what appears to be a giant sculpted timber block. Timber is literally everywhere and the spaces are no less enjoyable for that. Other students focused on windows, hallways, and staircases, or that difficult transition between the public and private realm, that street level that we see in this section of the right. Uh, we must acknowledge that many factors influence people's interactions with each other. One sociological study of the US suburban context, while acknowledging the role of physical space and planning, posits the stronger influence of homogeneous or heterogeneous communities as part of capitalist for social contact. Hertzberger and others, however, argue for the designing in of options for possible social encounters, thus affording choice to residents. Some of our students began to address how the design of professional spaces in their projects could possibly influence social relations and thus contribute to social sustainability. So, in conclusion, I reflect on the writings of uh, writer and lecturer Peter Buchanan, who gives a cogent critique of the state of British architectural education. Uh, he observes, the attached from the ferment of epochal change, the grooves of academia are failing to engage with current critical realities. Where rather than relevance, what is sought is startling originality, no matter how spurious. He bemoans the lack of multidisciplinary projects, noting architects collaborate with a widening array of consultants in multidisciplinary design teams, of which even the architect component is made up of individuals of different expertise. Yet, architectural education is still geared to producing the solid ingenious rather than today's collaborative. In relation to the teaching of sustainability, he notes that it's, it is reduced to a much too narrow peripheral subject added on to the curriculum rather than forming the core of a radically restructured education. He outlines his vision of how sustainability should be taught to become the core of any architecture course, beginning with a multidisciplinary foundation course for architects, urban designers and planners, and landscape architects, and I would add engineers into that. So, considering Buchanan's critique in relation to the EIT project, I would say, first of all, we were talking about Britain, not the independent Republic of Ireland, but of course, in jest, I say that. We are in the Anglo, uh, Anglo-Saxon tradition of architectural education, and we have all the benefits and perhaps some of the pitfalls as well. So I would note first that, it should, that teachers work within given structures, and I've been, I'm going in defensive mode here now. Teachers work within given structures that are uh, often not achieved. While not all aspects of sustainable housing could be addressed in this one project, and some that were attempted were not always engaged in meaningfully by all students. In general, the students did grapple with current critical realities uh, in both the canon, and designed convincing university accessible apartments with timber structures, with many exploring hard and soft flexibility options, diverse threshold treatments, and all exploring a range of issues from the uh, urban scale down to one-to-one -one details of the construction system and textual treatment. 
So much was learned in this concrete project, more community engagement, more new meaningful multidisciplinary collaboration, and more rigorous scientific analysis of the energy performance of the student design would be an aspiration I would have certainly for a future project. And I'll just end with that's a, a summary of my conclusion there. I'll just end by acknowledging uh, the staff, Paul Kelly led his colleagues, led the, the, the uh, project in particular, had the idea of, uh, that it had to be in Tinder, and then the six of us taught on the project with him. Here's all our students, and here's a picture of the students on the day we introduced the project to them, particularly after we told them it had to be made in Tinder. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing the first uh, reference. We find it found online and shared on our Facebook uh, uh, group so everyone can access the first reference you mentioned on your slide about sustainable communities. Uh, my question is um, related to timber as a local material. Is timber the local material that people can buy uh, in or can find the surrounding of uh, Dublin, or...? Um, there, there is enough timber to build housing schemes in Ireland, but what we don't have is a mechanised way of uh, uh, manufacturing it in the way that would be necessary for housing projects like this. So, the, um, the uh, panels would have had to come in from outside. So, it's, it's not that developed. Import, imported? Yes. Imported. Yeah. Which, is, which would have affected the, the energy uh, calculation? No, no, no. I'm not uh, uh, thinking about that. That is important. Uh, yeah. uh, it's improving in Ireland, but, but it, it's still not that uh, space. No, no, no. Where the trees are cut. Yeah. That, that's my question. Because what we have in our region is a huge deforestation. So poor countries are cutting their trees and exporting for not, not a big money. And uh, deforestation is not that bad itself, but uh, in the critical situations like uh, floods and storms, they cause uh, uh, slides of terrain. So it, it's quite uh, questionable the sustain, sustainability of this concept. This is our uh, most recent experience from the city of Europe. <coughs> Uh, the people used to cut trees in their neighborhood, you know, either to sell or to do something with, with the, the wood. But finally, it caused a huge deforestation and a danger for, for the little towns, for cities. So um, we all like uh, uh, wood as material and wish we had uh, nice wooden houses and wooden constructions, but there is other side of, uh, of the story and that's our recent experience. So I, I just wanted to share that. So the students, architecture students, have to be aware of that. No, that's fine, and I accept your particular yeah. story, but the... the uh, Romania uh, is particularly affected by this okay. deforestation of... Well, no, it, oh, okay, so it's like they... The answer, like simple answer to that, is that you specify work from a, a, from a sustainable managed forest. So Just to be local. You, you have to be aware it's coming, but also that the trees are being replaced. So that's in the, in the, fifty years. <laughs> no, no, yes, but it, in, in terms of the carbon calculation, my understanding is once you're replacing them, that at least that they're that they're contributing immediately to taking CO two out of the out of the environment. Uh, you know, from being very young trees, so but they do this all the time. But I, I mean, your your point was about that. Your the example that you gave was about that it's causing land erosion. Yes, well, right. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But that I mean, that just needs to be managed. I mean, not all parts. That doesn't happen with all parts. I mean, when when you're talking about uh, uh, sustainable using yes. sustainable housing, especially, it needs to be local material. You know, if you can Sorry, stop, it needs to be local. 
local local which means it's in surrounding. Well, okay, but the 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 example I gave about the building in London, okay, their their argument on it, it seems quite convincing to me. I'm not an expert on this, but their argument was that the transport of the panels from Austria didn't matter in terms of the overall uh, uh, calculations. But it it, it it was so big because because it was sequestering so much carbon within it, the trees will be replaced, but even allowing for the the energy transport costs, that it didn't matter, you know, that they were still getting a, a really good sustainable building. So I think the whole issue transport I mean it it, it don't handle the type of transport. Uh, of course it would it's probably plain as best and hopefully they come back there. So uh, I don't necessarily think you can say that it has to be done. I mean, ideally it should be, but we, we just don't have enough forest in Ireland. But not only that, we don't have the, the tradition of manufacturing what we to do in Finland or Canada or Austria. Uh, and in order to build buildings like the suit for the uh, it would like, very likely to come from outside. But I, I accept your general point in that it has to be looked at as a whole. And, we, we couldn't expect the students to do that. They're just architects, they're not uh, scientific engineers, you know what I mean? So there's, yeah. like, there's a whole other layer of study that needs to be done on top of what the students did. Right? And my, my colleague Brian McBride, who introduced the, um, the uh, software system, <laughs> and tried to get them to do that analysis of the energy. You know, some of them did it, and some of them didn't. Because they were trying to do so many things, so it, it wasn't mandatory. And perhaps that's all we need to do, make it mandatory, so it's more, much more inclusive. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a couple more questions, but I'm afraid we have to go to the last one. Not a question, just a very short note. Uh, I uh, know from an American uh, environmental assessment system that the uh, local material is considered if it is from 800 kilometers distance. So that means that in Europe all materials are local materials, really. <laughs> from this point of view, which America and with a yeah. uh, bigger country have. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've heard 600, 600 <coughs> magic figure, but it, it, really, it really depends on the mode of transport. And, and it is an important issue. There was one more there at the front. Two more. I'm just going to make uh, a note as well, uh, in terms of uh, sourcing of sustainable material, uh, it pretty much depends on the replacement that uh, Jane mentioned. It depends on how um, the forest has been managed, if it is a sustainably managed forest, and I think, uh, I think uh, uh, it's not really an issue. What becomes an issue is what you mentioned, uh, uh, in, in the case of Romania, if it is causing deforestation, if it is causing uh, erosion of, uh, of, of, of soil uh, or biodiversity has been affected negatively then it becomes an issue. But if it is not, then uh, uh, the economics and the, and the uh, uh, sustainability in terms of transportation and the energy that has been consumed as a result of such transportation uh, uh, is not really uh, of an issue. Thank you very much. Uh, this topic about uh, timber construction is is very very topical in in our region. I'm from Baltic, from Latvia, and it's, uh, timber is is local material. But we have a lot of discussion about uh, regulations concerning safety. Uh, this um, using of timber for high rises because of um, safety in fire. Uh, Accidents. Uh, do you have such uh, discussion of changes in regulation in the UK or uh, in, in Ireland? Because of, of course uh, all of us now this high rise in London, but actually according to our legislation, it, it will be possible to design high rise in uh, wooden construction. Yeah. Um, not not really because it's not. But like timber buildings of, of the kind of Australia are not really big yet. We have some timber houses, two-story max. So, but um, our, our analysis of it is that provided the timber is clad properly inside, that it will solve the 
um, the fire safety. Um, also, the, the system I showed you, both of the CLT systems use a, use a screen on the floor, um, which is interesting. So that gives that a fire protection to be truly remarkable. So, um, but our, our regulations are generally derived from the British ones. So if, if they're able to do this in Hackney and London, a nine story timber building, uh, I feel confident that. We could do it now and then comply with the regulations. I mean, the big issue is structure. And of course, we didn't get in, even though we did this one workshop with structural engineers, we, we didn't get into testing the structure because that's done. Uh, but again, that tends to come from the manufacturers because they take responsibility for the system they provide and they have their own engineers. And uh, so we rely on them, but I'm not telling. I mean, to give away any state secrets there, but Irish engineers generally go by timber and are not, they're not trained in, in construction, but they necessarily structural calculations. So it is a new area. We were pushing boundaries here for this project. It's the first time it's ever been done in the school. While the teaching was relatively conventional, we did try to do a lot of new things here. Whereas timber, I, I understand the next tower, timber tower we built was in Norway. Uh, so let me tell us about that. So, um, so it's it's coming uh, timber as a as a product in mass housing. I'm sorry, as as the main structure level. By the way, that's one other point. Like we, we did not insist that that the finishes have to be timber. And it's very interesting. Very few of the students, not that many of them, many explore different options. I mentioned time. There was one student who tied it up. Some of them did renovate, but generally they all went to timber planning. One, or, uh, one other, at least one other student that you saw in the detail there used the fiber cement board to make part of the project. So while it, it's a timber structure, it doesn't have to look like timber outside. It can be treated in something different. It can be arranged.